You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. What are you talking about? Huh? We're talking about How fucking much questions from Patreon. Hanging out with you. Questions yeah, from Patreon. That was, I, don't, I want to gloss over that. that Ch- uh, Chad just said, I love hanging out with Chaley and dismissed us like we're fucking... Because it was a personal conversation. <laughs> Why did you hit record? Well, because it sounded you like you were talking fucking credit secret. of, oh, Chad likes me best. Like you did. Oh, well, you're such a dick. Shaley, uh, we, Shaley did win. Here's a good one. The, uh, here's a good podcast right <laughs> now. <laughs> Mark it. <laughs> you remember in the beginning, whenever I first saw Shaley, I thought he hated me. Yep. And, uh, uh, and never been brought a up. While, I thought he hated me. Yeah. Oh, I guess you're right. Never been brought up. We've everybody, probably brought this up. Everybody's still to this day. So, oh, I, I believe uh, Olivia Grace brought that up drunk last yeah, night. Yeah, that's a weird. Goes, I remember this I still very think clearly. Chaley, because I think he thinks I do nothing here. I go, no, he knows you're working. You're writing. No, you're an artist. You do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I don't you have like you have such like uh your face when you're stressed out is like so intense. You just have a very like abrupt like stress face and I'm like what did I do? Bingo but it's, will I know attest it's me. To this. It's not you. It's when just I'm you actually are. when I do get it's in great. a working groove uh, I'm like that with bingo. I go no, no, I'm actually fucking working like when I get in that like maybe once a week I'll get into a place where I'm going to fucking just keep moving a zone. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I had the same thing with Hennigan is he didn't like me, which was true as well. And then I did the same thing that I did with Shaylee is instead of uh, wait and see if they didn't like me, I just adjusted to how much I was willing to contribute to uh you know the cult and oh. then once uh i was uh, like they're like oh this guy's all in i think hey how about this here's a thought experiment olivia this yeah. is for you hey uh olivia that uh that idea of like what, what you just expressed of like shaley and his look right imagine that look representing you would that be cool what do you mean like in your endeavors. Oh, absolutely. Oh, so it's a positive thing for Mr. Stanhope. Totally. I wasn't it's shitting on it at all. It's great for the podcast. It's great for issues with Andy. It just doesn't work with you when you walk in here at the, the zero hour and you go like, you interpret something. Uh, Except that's what I was saying. I was saying, I know it's me. I know how hard you're working. I know how focused oh, you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I, did, I, I guess I fell asleep during that part. And I like, so I, I respect you a lot. And so it's just, and but you, you do admit that you do have a face that's a little oh, intense totally. sometimes. But the people I work for don't complain about that face. I wasn't complaining about I, I, I it. Did. I was we, saying that I know that when actually I, you actually Doug yeah, does. Because do. do. that's how it all came up with you two bitching about me in the cone of non silence. Totally affectionate bitching about you though. Because no. it's like all like you're so you're such a respectable person. You're awesome. No, don't do this. I'm not doing don't anything do right other than uh, Olivia, I love you. Okay. And, and, and I support you and what you're doing. Yeah. But at the same time, don't don't make this be about like making me feel better. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Good start to the podcast. Ugh. I hope we're not starting yet. This should be Patreon. Yeah, no, we, oh, have, to ta- we have to take Patreon questions. I got them right here. Oh. Thank you, Patreon hey, you know people. Thank you so much for Patreon because they're the only reasons we made it through last year. Chad, some of those checks I cut. I couldn't cover them until Patreon came on board. I, and so, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. Who has a question? I appreciate it, That's my credit. That's not Chad's credit. <laughs> I'm fucking drunk. Yeah, <laughs> give it to Chad, then. No, I can rate it. All right. He's not that drunk. Jesus. Go ahead. James Frost Wynn says, your story about your mother. Hey, I know that guy. Do you? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Why? Uh, in Austin at uh, the uh, festival there, JT's, JT's. Festival. He was the uh, guy who played the trumpet in our pot circle. And then he came to Las Vegas. He was at Tommy Rockers. He was, oh, the uh, sax guy. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not the guy who came up on stage, but his buddy, the guy with the beard. Oh, I thought, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. All right, so James Frost Wynn says, Your story about your mother is a very important piece to me. 
Both of my parents had passed away by the time I was 25, and they had an incredibly dark sense of humor as well. I scattered both of their ashes by putting them in a pinata and busting it open on a beach in Hawaii. So my question is, sorry, I should have gone to this. Did you do anything dark for the funeral or with the ashes? Which I honestly don't know what well, what's gone on with all that. Well, uh, other than the ones that we snorted with cocaine with Johnny Depp. That is true. Uh, I don't think that story's been told anyway. No, it has. It, it's, uh, it, it was alluded to in This Is Not Fame because I couldn't use his name, but fuck it. No. Uh, but no, I, the, the mother's ashes we try to sell on eBay to, uh, for a charity for a uh, humane society fucking, she's no, it's a all the lady. D- a donation. It was clearly a- stated. It's, it's in illegal. The, yeah. So and, yeah, those ashes are still around and a funeral is a fucking waste of time. We had no funeral. I should have written a funny obituary for the fucking Bisbee observer, but no, the dead people don't care. By the way, ashes aren't like uh, someone flicking a cigarette or a cigar. (laughs) Ashes from a funeral. There's bone chunks in there. uh, Yeah, like, uh, I I can't even, I'm trying to think of a fucking analogy. Is it like sand? No, no, it's way way chunkier chunkier. than that. There's like, uh, like, uh, if you like ground bone and meat through like one of those hand crank things, that you'd like get chunks of bone in. That's it's you've this, eaten ground beef where you got a chunky thing. I've stored your mom, and yeah. I know the difference. <laughs> Go on, the next question. I don't know what Doug. You, I think did we've you talked s- about this. You slid through this one. There's a yeah. You told me to cross out the ones that I don't want to fucking right, I read. I, okay, okay. X's mean read it. C I know, means I know, it's but you about had an X you. and a and a slash. So I don't know what that means. Uh, hey, Chad, do that one. Uh, Joaquin. Joaquin says, do you have any great stories about being on the road with Joey Diaz? And will you guys ever swap cast with each other? Uh, yeah, the, the, the stories, the road stories are early days where he just hosted this, the Joker broker at the Broker Inn <laughs> in, in, in Boulder, Colorado. I know that because I got a driver's license there. I think we, did we just talk about this? No. Yeah, uh, when I lived out of my car in Colorado, my driver's license had expired. So I was playing the broker in in uh, Colorado, and uh, you could get a driver's license the same day in Colorado. So that's when I had... Yeah, we did talk about it. No, this. we talked about it because we were talking about... Uh, Olivia DUIs. And uh, getting yeah, right. a, a license out forever. Okay. He was he hosted the open uh, the the open mic the fucking where triple gig at the Broker Inn where I got that driver's license. What city? Boulder, Colorado, uh, and Joey Diaz was the house MC, but he didn't really want to do it, so he came in. I, 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 I'm I, I'm sorry, I'm fucking sick. I got the push me pull you, uh, fucking <laughs> flu. You don't know which end to fucking aim at the toilet because it's coming out of both ends, and I gotta go. And he just, he didn't give a fuck. He was a fucking open mic, basically. 94. House MC, and he was the funniest guy. That had to be 94, right? Uh, It was probably earlier. Really? Yeah, like 92, probably. When when he got booked up to Anchorage, it was from Roger Rittenhouse, who was out of Denver, who was giving me Seattle comics and LA comics. And I don't know. And then all of a sudden, Denver, she's got the next one. Denver comics started showing up. And I'm like, that's... What the fuck? Where's Denver comics? <laughs> L.A., Seattle, and then Denver. And Joey Diaz shows up like he's one of the guys. That and, and this he's is always the same, one of the this guys. Is, this is the same run that I met you and had already done fucking like time in prison for kidnapping or something. He so didn't give a fuck about his whole thing. Mic. Was like he uh, <laughs> floated across uh, to get to a Florida. Anyway, he shows up in Anchorage, and I'm picking up the comics at uh, Anchorage Airport. And I walk, I'm stand, I don't know who these guys are. And he walks me because, hey, two questions. Are you Shaley? And where are we getting Madden Thunderfuck? 
That was it. I remember Solid when questions. we booked him at Lake Shore. That was it. Both. We booked him at Lake Shore. Wrong Theater. order, by the way. To, we booked him at Lake Shore Theater in Chicago. Yeah, back in the, that heyday, and uh, he didn't show up. And, and uh, <laughs> whatever that guy's name was, the fucking Captain, ran the place. Captain Spalding or whatever. Uh, the, he he said. Yeah, I, 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 your friend didn't show up for the gig and is about to start. And I called him. He goes, yeah, I couldn't make it. Shit happens and hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> that gig was, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, who was it? Was it uh, Erickson? No. Uh, Everyone. It was, no, it was Fucking Andy Norm Andrews. Norm Wilkerson. Norm was Wilkerson and uh, Brendan Walsh. And then a bunch of other people, and this is classic. I don't know what, you know, Hennigan we, has that footage. Hennigan, we, we, we've I filmed the whole this. fucking thing, but it is one of those things where it's like, like in your head, you're like, that didn't happen. That fucking happened. And there's footage of this where Brendan Walsh, fucking Brendan Walsh goes, stop this, Shaley. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you need to stop this right now. Andy and he was know. pissing on my, in a trash can draped in an American flag. No, he was pissing on a flag in a trash can, which is why I have <laughs> I, video. I, I get drug out in the trash can for by me piss because the only American reason flag. we could stop this because the whole just talked about this audience recently. was on the stage, so Doug can have them all smoke because we were an extended. Uh, just we've gone over this. Right. Go to the next question. Uh, so uh, my friend Greg Taylor, who I respect so much, handed me this piece of paper and circled the name Sid Villain, who uh, asks, you muttered something about Brian Regan recently, but I couldn't get whether you knew him or not. Curious, because you two are my faves, though on different ends of the spectrum. Uh, the autistic spectrum? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, Brian, cool, bro. <laughs> Brian Regan is... Uh, He's like Seinfeld, where you go, I appreciate what you do. I, it's not my kind of comedy, but you do it so well. Right. And the only time I've met Brian Regan, unless Chaley <clears throat> corrects me and goes, we ran into never. him in an airport. <laughs> no, never. No, uh, was when I was a kid, I was a middle act in fucking uh, knuckleheads in Minnesota at the you Mall of America. Him? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I must have opened for him. And uh, but there was a stupid mall bar next door, and he came yeah. over and he drank, and he was really fucking cool. This is like ninety four, ninety three, and yeah, he's a great guy, and he, he's a great comic for what he does. We won't co headline anytime soon because <laughs> we're opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> you know, I, I think I. But think yeah, he's a great guy. I reflect often on that whole thing where you talked about. Uh, Hey, everyone listening, I would rather drink in an airport bar with Dane Cook than all of you. That back one, like that beef was heavy. and But, but the, like I shit I think on his still, comedy, but I would still rather hang out with him than my biggest fan. It stands that like there's, there's a common respect that is not evident in, or in politics <laughs> That comics will always hang out with each other because they have they have the core. It's a very weird life. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. It's like saying, it's "Hey, so all insular. all bass guitarists would all love to be." Of course they would, because we complain about the lead guitarist. We have we have a through line, and and comics are the same way. And I always think about that every time we're in a uh, airport situation or a, a situation to where. Like Doug could be uncomfortable. It was like, oh, it's a comic. Oh. Like the Robert Schimmel thing. Oh, no. stand down, Shaley, stand down. <laughs> yeah, it's like after a show too, you can see like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, who's like a comic is they're like way at the end of the line and they're kind of like hovering and they're just like, oh, I'm a comic. And then they, there's like a immediate like, oh, okay, cool. there's a rapport. Oh, you, you can know? tell who's a recent comic. And who's done comedy. I am so good at profiling comedians that are at the shows. That, yeah. You're, you're comedian? Yep. How'd you know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you bring your backpack here? That's usually yeah, a good way to tell. Ah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can do a whole episode on backpack comics. Yeah. Hey, uh, Doug, Jim wants to know, actually have been through... A similar situation with my father. Kind of curious about the changes to Amy's personality post-injury. 
if any, and what it is like to reconnect, reacclimate, etc. Well, uh, Amy is in the room. I always love when people call her Amy and not yeah. Bingo. It's like they're trying to show her respect that yeah. I don't give her. Or I they're her doctor. Like that. But, uh, yeah, no, she's... Uh, you have to remind Bingo of a lot of things. Like, I don't remember anything. Don't worry. Before your brain injury, you didn't remember anything anyway. You're fine. And uh, she gets frustrated a lot, uh, and uh, her her uh, her patience is limited. But it always was. It's just more pronounced. But yeah, she's doing fine. Uh, she just doesn't remember, which I go through the same thing as a fucking drunkard. I Where thinking, I get frustrated, I don't remember what happened. I don't. I don't fucking know. I was thinking about the frustration and the patience thing with you too. Everything you were saying really described you. <laughs> so I was like, "That's yeah, true. perfect. That's uh, you guys are. You guys. You guys are made for each other because that's you just described yourself. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, it's embarrassing on some level, where. Like I hate going out in public sometimes where I'm afraid someone's going to go, hey, which happens all the time. I'm the guy. And I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. There's a lot of guys. It's been 30 fucking years almost in this business where you go, uh, and I've written about it in the book. It's fucking, yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to have to say I don't remember you. And Bingo and I, we had a a thing. We still have a thing where if she sees the look in my face or I see the look in her face, Safeway all the time. People yeah. go, hey, how you doing? Bingo. Hey, stay at home. And we have no idea who the, that person is. <laughs> Someone we met in town. And Bingo would always say at a party, oh, I'm Bingo. What's your name? When she saw that I couldn't remember their name yeah. or vice versa. Yeah, it's it's a fucking weird life, a, a comedian's life. You meet so many fucking people, and uh, you can't remember them. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, Doug, the question is a uh, new question, a very serious question from uh, Plastic Dingus. Why do I always get these ones, Shaley? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm noticing a trend. That's on his driver's license, Plastic. <laughs> Plastic Dingus asks, if Doug ever had to leave Bisbee, we'll assume gentrification ruined it. What is the next place you guys would move to? Uh, bingo, if you want to chime in. I always, uh, before I moved here, I wanted to move to Reno because it's a weird uh. place to fucking live. And, you know, the temperature is not that different. It's really fucking hot in the summer, and like Bisbee, it's fucking cold in the winter. And Reno is a weird, weird place to live. Reno is the place that I, I would probably go to. Chaley and I and Key West were talking about, yeah, uh, well, yeah. Where would you move to? We had this conversation. I don't know if it was on a podcast. No, because I saw the email questions that came but, in. <laughs> But no, Costa Rica was when we first started going to no Costa way. Rica. Oh, I, I want to move here. And then two weeks fucking later, I can't wait to get the fuck out of yeah. here. I need real internet. I don't. I can't go to a library. <laughs> Bisbee would have to go, like, like one way or the other, so far that we would have to leave here. He's but saying it, hypothetically, yeah, if yeah. we had to leave here, where would you move to? Me? Yeah, you live here. Well, I like Tucson. <laughs> Tucson's <laughs> actually fucking great. I'd go to El, uh, no, uh, New Mexico. Okay. Ugh! Before we moved oh. here, we were uh, Albuquerque. We were we were either gonna move here or to Casper, Wyoming. Uh, oh, that's a good spot. Uh, was the two um, places we researched before we cold moved though? Too. Cold. There were a lot of different different seasons. Wait, can I yeah. still say your merch? Because I'll move anywhere. <laughs> I go the. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Bingo. Going. Where would you move? Where, where, where I'll couldn't I go? Whatever you say. You don't have to get up. Where would you? Straight back to New Orleans. New Orleans, oh, says Bingo. Jesus. Ugh. I do have that property in Alaska that uh, me and my uh, crazy friends have talked oh. about uh, moving to and starting. Can't our wait own, for that uh, reality show. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have. No, I, well, just I hang have a, in. Hang in there long enough. They'll do a reality show of you going to your uh, fucking property. I have a lot in Chloride, Arizona, <laughs> that I bought drunk during the Man Show in my office, drunk on eBay. And I, I, you have to get a surveyor to find out where it is. Actually, if, <laughs> yeah, we went to Chloride, but we didn't find our lot because it's a fucking field. Actually, of Doug, I've, I've sold scrub. it. I've sold it four times on eBay. <laughs> it's a you field of talk, bramble. What are we talking about right now? <laughs> I tried to give it away to a homeless person, and they uh, yeah, they didn't. Oh, want to he was so stupid not to take it. You gotta pay taxes. Fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's like, like $11 a year for taxes. As you drive <laughs> but by But I have to it. write a check, which is, I'd rather pay $11 to not have to actually sit down and write a check. <laughs> As you're leaving Chloride, there's advertisements for Chloride. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even know how a car works. Oh, Chloride <laughs> is a fucking weird town. So I have, the first time whenever I heard about Chloride, Stanhope actually offered it up to us as our uh, Arizona uh, destination when we weren't in Alaska because whenever I, I found out I had uh, I had land in Alaska, my dad says, I, I own this land here, you can have it. I started talking with all of the degenerate people you've introduced me to or that I've met through you. And it, pretty soon everybody's like, hey, we can uh, we can live in Alaska. We, we can do this. We've got, we've got like farmers and, and Killers, and we've got all kinds of different people that live in uh, farmers, you know, yeah, that killers, could live. and farmers. So, so uh, I, I told my dad like about Bisbee. that. Oh, there's a it's kind of a blue state with a red state kind of vibe. Oh, farmers and killers. Well, you know, everything in Chad, between. We were, we're at the, we're at the burger. I don't want to give away all of your assets, you know, you don't want to just tell Chad, everybody what we, you we were at the burger, we were at that burger spot. We were having burgers and shakes at the, the Roadrunner. Road runner. And oh, in Anchorage. Yes, in Anchorage, Alaska. And you fessed up to where that was, and we tried to find it on any fucking thing that would show it on a map. And that is like clearly when I'm sitting in Anchorage, Alaska at a burger sh- at a burger shop, I'm like, we can go there. I got guys that get us there. It's it is one of the things, but it was the summer. No wait. It's fucking winter. Yeah, you can, you can yeah. get there over. It's river. easier. It's get, easier in the can, winter. You can get there over river yeah. in the winter. Yeah, sure. I was a mate, Doug. This place is so far out of like. Oh, I'm sorry. I was off doing the issues with Andy podcast on the other. <laughs> it's available on uh, uh, YouTube. I, I know you every lying. Friday at. I, uh, I know you're lying issues with, we don't have room for guests. I'm doing issues <laughs> with Inman. So uh, you, you must be doing a different one. But your plate, your dad's place is so far out of the fucking. I don't even know how like you even consider that a thing. It's 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 called remote Alaska. When you look it up on the map, it doesn't have a a, a, a name below below. It's way below outside Willow. Okay, just across you know, the Susitna. For the listener, it's outside yeah, Willow. For the listener, for the listener, it's outside the Susitna. Serious listeners. But that's serious. A, but hey, my uh, point, serious wishes. My point of this was is that when I told my dad about this, he was excited about it because he said somebody's going to go live on my land that oh, I bought awesome. in the seventies that I never thought you know anybody would do anything with. And then I told him also, I said, well, I got a group of friends that we're all kind of just on the edge of uh, life and death, and none of us really care. So we all have a plan that we might just start taxing uh, border crossers and, uh, uh, you know, drug smugglers and stuff. And he was like, oh, no, that doesn't sound good. He's, <laughs> he's like, why don't you, why, why, I like it. Why don't you meet up with the guys that want to go to Alaska with you? And I go, yeah, same guys. Yeah, same, ex- Actually, yeah. same exact same guys. We're, Were you trying to tell me to break earlier? We needed a break. Because this is a regular free podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take a break. Uh, all right. Sorry. 
No, no, it's not your fault. It's Chaley's fault. What? Why is it my fault? <laughs> All right. Omax Cryo Freeze. Living with chronic pain is the worst. It's more than a feeling of discomfort. It can affect your whole life. Many of my listeners probably have some type of pain that has prevented them from relaxing and sleeping or stopped them from exercising. Many of the people around me, all of these people that I'm trying to turn into a cult in Bisbee, and they can't do shit. They can't even walk my dog. Someone's got fibromyalgia. Or Derek with his steel rod in his leg being put back together. And old people pain and fat people pain and neighbor Dave and his bad knee trying to lug around that giant carcass of a body. Yeah, we have chronic pain all around us and we're giving everybody Omax Cryo Freeze. What's your story, Chaley? Well, you know, Doug, lifting all that merch in and out of the van all day, it can take its toll. And I get this little pain on the outside of my elbows and I use that Cryo Max roll on and that's what you smell when we're driving to the next gig it's like a mentholatum kind of smell you know and that tells me it's working and that i remembered to put it on because sooner or later that pain just melts away and i love using it nightly right before i go to bed and i just dream and dream of lifting big bags of merch over my head and throwing them on stage because i feel totally revitalized by morning how does it work for anal all right, Omax Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full bottle of Cryo Freeze CBD Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. This discount also applies towards any product site-wide. Just go to omaxhealth.com and enter Stanhope. That's Omax, O-M-A-X, health.com, and enter Stanhope to get 20% off Cryo Freeze and site-wide. Not that the listener work. will ever know, but uh, yeah, these podcasts. I think we're on our fourth because there, there, there's no fourth. I don't Everything know. Everything is one. Mm. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, our uh, guest today, the Frankenstein monster. Yeah, and Olivia Grace. Um, wait, I, 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 I her name uh, is Warden uh, Edgewise. Wait, wait, does that mean I'm Frankenstein? No, of what? course you are. Hey, uh, Doug. By the way. Hey, Doug. What? I forgot uh, halfway through these uh, Patreon questions. We're sending a gift to all the Patreon question people that we've... You're if drunk. We read, I'm way drunk. And then half, like, two, two podcasts through. When gets drunk, it's the Greg Chaley podcast. <laughs> no, I not, like it. I I'm do. No he carries it. Listen. <laughs> I remembered that we're sending something, so I need to remark on these papers. So don't throw the papers away. All right. So who's got the next question? I think Olivia, Olivia Grace. Oh, did you have you spoken in this? Wait, hold on. Podcast? This is the beginning of the podcast. Introduce everyone, Doug. It's not the beginning of the podcast. The of this it's one. the new one. Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought you were telling me to take Wait, a twenty-minute break. Oh shit, I did. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, there you go. Here, let me let me mark. No, no, don't let fucking mark, edit that edit. out. Don't you edit I'm yourself editing. out. Hey, guess what? It's you. <laughs> no, don't you fucking dare. <laughs> Olivia Grace, what's the question? Uh, so Zach says, Doug, for someone who makes people laugh for a living, you must look at a lot of smiles and therefore a lot of teeth. How do you deal with an unfortunate dental situation in the front row at your shows? <laughs> He's got more questions. It's a bit of a long one. Should I barrel through it? Oh, uh, see. Now, yes, go, go to the I, end. I am going to, I am going to. Uh, Doug, he has, a, he has a personal experience here at the end. Yeah, no, the fucking teeth question. Because I remember uh. Renee. My uh, f former wife lady, and I was at a party daytime where a guy with the worst teeth. I remember there was a smoking commercial where a guy had the fucking giant fucking long in the tooth, yellow smile. It was a don't smoke because you look like this. And he had those teeth <laughs> that I now have. And uh, I remember him smiling fucking so big all the time he didn't give a fuck and uh, uh, it's in the book in the commercial oh hang on do you want to take a spam bot call uh 
And I remember like appreciating the fact that he smiled regardless of he had the same teeth of a fucking like when you Canadian cigarette packages and UK <laughs> cigarette packages, you, this will make your teeth look like this. He had those teeth and he didn't give a fuck. And that's in the book about Burt Kreischer. He makes you laugh regardless of the fact that you have bad teeth. Because now I have those teeth. Uh, uh. Uh, yeah, so no, no, I've never had a fucking issue with someone with bad teeth. Because I have them. Even, like, I think what they were really getting at was, like, uh, what's happening in the front row? Does that affect you? Are you No, fixated? he's talking about specifically about I his know, own teeth. But I'm trying to make yeah, this. Yeah, who gives well, a fuck? A, that was about three quarters of the question that you didn't listen to. So. Oh, shit. I'm not going to read this one. <laughs> what? Read it. Zach has a very long question, but you put an X by it, so I'm going to read it. That's the one she just read. Teeth is like fucking. Holy shit, Shaley's drunk. He's about to read your question when, again. No, when, when I when I when I fucking started going bald, and I go, who gives a fuck about hair? Then his teeth are the same thing. They're just. God damn it! Why does that guy get? Why does that guy get a, a premium? What? Hey, uh, uh, Joe Rock asks. <laughs> hey, hey, Shank. Quit. Quit, re quit reading over my shoulder. Can, can, I was can, open. Just read I was the open. fucking question, Chaley. Hey, uh, you still go to the Shady Dell or whatever the fuck that trailer park is called. Uh, never heard you talk about it anymore. Keep keep on keeping on. Hang on. Bingo wants on. Bingo wants Hi. to talk. Dot's Diner at the Shady Dell is going to reopen. It's okay. like an eight-seat fucking diner and bingo... Is gonna pour coffee. She can't work there, no, legit, because. No. But she's gonna actually help. It's actually out. illegal for Bingo to work there. Well, it's not illegal, but no, she'd lose but, her benefits. But she can pour coffee. Like for me, it's illegal for her to work there. She can she's fucking hostess and be uh, like feel like she's got a fucking job that she yes. can't have, which is uh, uh, that's a whole fucked up conversation. The fact that. Yes, she's got complete disability, but she can actually help somewhere. Yeah. She can do stuff, but if she does it and gets fucking five twenty five an hour, I don't know what minimum wage is or how much a gallon of milk costs. That's why I can't run for Ten president. years ago, that was right. Uh, but uh, the Shady Dell is still open, and they pay current mem minimum wage. <laughs> I don't know what the 525 the, came in from. Whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, the Shady Dell. Go. Next question. I don't have it. Jerain asks, what has become of Washtub Willie and his Parliament of Owls? <laughs> Parliament of Owls. Wow, that. she should be ghostwriting my book. She? <laughs> you had another Jermaine? You, know, you assigned a gender to that name? I don't know. He did. I, I, whatever. He I, said she. Uh, I, I go with whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, washed up Willie, when we asked earlier on, a month ago or whatever, if we did a where are they now of people that were regular guests or semi-regular guests, washed up Willie was one of the top ones. And he will be back on. He will definitely be on the Audible book when it comes out. Uh, yeah, he's he's doing his own thing. He's a fucking good guy. And from the beginning, he was a good guy. And we found a common cause in bingo where other cunts might have an adversarial, wait, my wife left you for... Now, now we're going to fucking take care of this chick. Yeah, it's in the book. Uh, he's uh, he's around. He's 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 doing uh, he's doing uh, whatever he has to do to survive. Like everyone in fucking Bisbee, they're just trying to fucking uh, you know, make a living. I think they were more concerned with the owls. Oh, the owls are dead. I killed them. Uh, dead owl. <laughs> Thanks. That there's that. Uh... That that didn't really happen. I don't. The know. Parliament of Owls is because when he was in the outhouse one time. There were owls living in that outhouse. Yeah, yeah. And it's in the owls. book. Fuck them. Well, parliament them of Owls book. is what you call like a murder of crows. Yeah. It's a parliament of owls. 
That is not true. Thanks, Sheila. You had a different term. Really? You had, a constitution of owls. Is that... you had it in your book. I think you called it like a constitution of owls or something like that. No, no. I, the, Parliament no, of owls. I, I had my own phrase. A herd of cows. It's not like you had his own phrase for. Like, Get me a fucking whiskey Bailey's coffee and shut the fuck yes. up and don't ever tell me I'm wrong. Oh, here we go. I'm telling you what you used in the book. Ow, he just oh, threw Fritos at me. No, oh, it was popcorn. Oh, popcorn. Well, good. Now the fucking dog's going to choke on it. Uh, a kernel in his neck. I'm going to have him put down. And you're like, no, you just have to give him a Heimlich way, maneuver. Way premature. <laughs> he just has kernels. No, Shut up. I'm going to put all of you down. I'm yeah. going to replace all of you with the Unbookables 4. <laughs> <laughs> give me a question. Uh, I don't. Uh, just give me fucking double caffeine. That Shit, one. He's eating popcorn on the podcast. You don't know he's don't drunk. eat it in the microphone. You know Read a question. Drunk. Alex Butler asks, "Hey guys, where do you think each of you would be today if you've never met each other and made the funhouse what it is?" Hey guys, <laughs> I'll tell you. We'd all have our own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that no one listened to just like this one. <laughs> and I've actually been contemplating this question a lot because all I would have to do is just shut off my phone and uh, take a lot of naps, and then my life would go back to where it was, where Better? I didn't know anybody. <laughs> yeah, oh. and I didn't have any friends Doug. whatsoever. I have had uh, a the, the last year and a half. I have had a like a weird year. We're starting with this fucking book and fucking living at home stretch. And yeah, I, where would I be? Look, doing stand up comedy. <laughs> like you, I would, you would hustle. You would, you would figure your own thing out. You're Tom Dustin. You would, you would figure, you would, look. People don't understand that I have lost money every book I've written. Because <laughs> comedy pays so much more. And like every when you write a book and you, you're not good at it, <laughs> you have to try. Unlike stand-up comedy, yeah, it's a fucking work of ego. So when you sacrifice a shitload of time, writing a book that you and squander a lot of time going ah, I, say, uh, uh, I, I wonder if Doug's gonna knock you down on that he squandered a lot of time in this book but that's what you that's, do when you write yeah, is you go yeah, I'll find every excuse not to write it's a cliche uh, but yeah you do uh, but, but, but Doug I, this is just between me and you uh, <laughs> Hey, not, Connie uh, Chung. Uh, <laughs> all right. I don't, I don't have to ask a question. You can go on. I didn't put any whiskey in it. That's for you to do. Go ahead. I'm listening, Jalen. My question was, uh, when I was playing in a band, yep. I was uh, bouncing off a, a couple other guys, and I was oh. actually booking the band. Uh, if, I, if like all of a sudden someone said, you can't do this anymore, what would you do? I'd have nothing to say. If someone in 96 said to you, you can't do stand-up anymore, what are you going to do? What would you do? What, what's your oh, fallback? Okay. That, that is not the question this guy... That's he, my he, question. His question was, if we hadn't met each other, what would we be doing? What you're saying, in a fantasy world... If I could do anything, what would I be doing if I wasn't a comic yeah. would be defense attorney because I yes. am the best fucking attorney. I can't imagine you not. Of all the attorneys like that, I know. Like that answer is exactly right. Like that is perfect for you. I just don't know law. But, but you, I know you fucking would arguments. You, you Every, would if you dedicated yourself to that craft. Anyone yeah. can learn the law. Oh, it it, it no, takes up no, no. I listen, fucking come on. I did. I I went to real estate school that taught you every thing about legal shit, but not how to sell real estate. The, when I was fucking nineteen or something, I went to real estate school. I got a goddamn diploma oh and then got out of did there. Did nothing and with didn't it. Not estate. know anything about a how real to sell. Estate but, diploma. 
Yeah. Anyone can learn yeah, the law. It. You have a way. I of- have an associate's degree in business management. How about that? For- Manage this podcast. How about that for worthless <laughs> fucking accolades? Yeah, I, I I had to learn a lot of the nomenclature, but I didn't know how to sell a fucking house. I was fucking nineteen, and I looked like I was four. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know anything about anything. Uh, so what would what would I be doing? Chaley just changed that whole question. So let's scrap that question. No, I Go tried to, to make it uh, relatable. In that, what would uh, be, we be I don't doing know what, if we you, didn't know each other? Well, that's why I answered it, because I figured I was about the only one whose life would be different if we didn't know each other. I was trying to make... No, you'd still be sitting at home. Yeah, right. You'd still be doing comedy. My my life's the only one that would be really different from what it is now. So what I tried to do was make it be before that. All right. Doug, you couldn't do comedy. I because Olivia Grace would (laughs) still be doing comedy. So Chaley, you're you're the only one that can answer it. So go ahead. What would you be doing if you didn't know The way I framed the question was that if someone said to you, you can no longer do comedy after you won the San Francisco Comedy Company Com- <laughs> <laughs> That's not the question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if we oh, didn't oh, meet oh, each oh, other, oh. what would you be doing? Humana, humana, humana. And my question was, what would <laughs> not, both of us- answer a question with a question. If we, it, like at the same no time- No one's drinking here. At the same time, if we didn't meet, what would I be doing? I don't fucking know. And I was tr- posing that upon you of like, what would you be doing if someone said in 95, you can no longer do comedy? What would you be doing? No, the- I'd still be doing comedy if I didn't meet you. That doesn't- <laughs> The question wasn't when, after you met Shaley and your life well, got no, fucking just, crazy. It says if you, if you hadn't met each other. But... Okay, the way it's a, it's, it's a stupid that question. Like, Go to the next question. No, that was a stupid we're question. We're all that. It's a fucking well, dumb But I want to know, Doug, in 95, after you won the San Francisco <laughs> comedy competition. Stop fucking dropping my best accolades. He just wanted to see if he can say it. <laughs> That's exactly what just happened. <laughs> it did not. What would, Doug, after that, what would you, if, if, if like you thought, oh, this is the best ever, I could never do better than this, what am I gonna do after this? I'd be a defense attorney, I Ask already answered this. Ask and answer. I'd go to law school and be the best right. lawyer. I'm gonna be boring and going to the next thing. Yeah. T- Troy Ramig asks, as Doug has been working on the new book, has it generated any new material is it what is that he's saving for the next Gen- act? Generated. generated. As it generated. I said it. Uh, I said it. Uh, that's a good generous. question because. You heard it. Fucking it. Uh, it's actually the opposite where I'm writing a, the book and I go, oh, this is something I want to put in my act. Oh, but this would go so good in the book where I'm like, all right, fuck the book. It's more important to have new material for the road than it is to have it in the book because the book is not supposed to be fucking bits. So, yeah, I, yeah, if anything, but I get bits I don't put into the book rather than bits from the book that I put into my But you do that constantly act. where you're like, you're editing, like, this is a book thing. This is a, a thing that has legs. It's going to go further than that. The book is about 2016. I, so I'm not going to talking put about in, in the writing process. Yeah. Are there things that come up? Don't fucking look at me like that. I'm saying, are there things that come up that are not just like this is Chad Shank and Olivia Grace are here too. Are you trying to fucking walk me? Yeah. <laughs> I love it when you walk. What? That hasn't happened in a long time. I, I hope know. that doesn't happen today. Calm well, down, guys. This is our like, fourth to... podcast in a day. I... The last time you guys got into a fight was at the bar at the uh, Alc. The, uh, uh, I don't remember the fucking name of the, the hotel. And then I had to defuse the fight by picking on a bunch Don't. of band that came in. Do you guys remember that? Where? What's that name of that hotel that we stayed what, at in what Tucson? What city? Tucson. Oh. By the hospital. 
the al oh, the al aloft. Aloft. Or aloft. Aloft. Not the alco. That was the other <laughs> thing. Yeah. The cry balls. The, the cry a balls. That's in the book. The aloft. <laughs> He is, that's what happened too. At the bar. just tried to at throw the bar, a beer can at me and he throwing missed. things at Stanhope. And I was so oh, uncomfortable, yeah, Olivia, that. that I didn't know what to do. So there was checking. Read a question, for Hold God's sake. Gr- Read a question. Uh, 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 hang on. All right. Hold, hold that thought. We'll be right back. James, have you ever used Eros Guide for hookers on the road? Eros Guide, that sounds interesting. What is it? Eros Guide is where, uh, in my later stage of getting hookers via computer, I would go to Eros Guide. They have uh, hookers in every major metropolitan area. So, is this like uh, it tells you what they're, they're, it gives you pictures, tells you what they're into. Right, because I'm cost. tired of going to Craigslist, finding these stinky hookers. Is there a better to Hey, your go? face isn't really pixelated. Get out of my Motel 6. <laughs> <laughs> How much to just talk for three months? <laughs> okay. Alright, I'll give you 250 bucks an hour, but I get to live on your couch for a year and a half. And believe me, you'll be paying me that back. <laughs> did you say no? I like what you did. I respect that. <laughs> Can I do some laundry at your house? It's just, it's just this jacket and cap. <laughs> All right, that's a plug from James Inman. Now back to the podcast. Already sort of in progress. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. We're back. Read a question. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> Way to Carson it up. No, that was a, a that's a David Letterman. I was trying to... And if they weren't real cards, could I do this? I and he'd was... flip the cards. I, I was trying to uh, take a, some the edge off of the segue there, Shaley, from the anger that you had expelled. I know. Anger? He's very yeah. angry. <laughs> a lot of times I think... That Chaley doesn't like me. From Squee, Squee, even though you respect him so much. I didn't say that. You said that. Question, question, question. Chaley's gone. Chaley's walking. He just threw over a chair. (laughs) He's kicking things. Holy shit! He tore the entire door off the frame. That's going to require really That's going to require a handyman. You know should, you're laughing. Should I still read this graph? Yeah, yeah, let's just go back to it. You just did really tear a thing off a thing. <laughs> should I just, but I know he's he's laughing. Should, should I just hit stop? I just, yeah, no. Sorry, it's not. Question. One yeah, question. Squeaky Tinky asks, did Inman always act like Inman, or was he normal when you first met him? No. Hey, guys, here's my Patreon question. What's the deal with James Inman? Is he the psycho girlfriend that just got dumped? Does he have legitimate mental issues? If it's a goof, I sincerely don't get it. Maybe it's uh, anyway, a. Anyway, you get what, it. What, what right, you're yeah, reading yeah. is two different yeah, questions no, about it, Inman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people and I, I actually questions. tweeted that one. But the same like, thing. Was, was he normal when you first met no, him? No, or? no, no. He was actually more brilliant when I met him, but crazy. Like he was still like hardcore conspiracy, and we'd load him up with Jägermeister shots to make him fall down on stage and lay on his back and scream at open mic. And, but he had like kind of not legitimate crazy, but then after nine 11, he started to go like trying to be mainstream and then he was awful. But to this day, I still don't know. Someone's like, is this a goof, like a running thing? It's like Windy City Heat. And I go, yeah, I don't know if, like, I fuck with him, but I don't know how savvy James Inman is to the fuck with. And sometimes I I coach him. Like, just do your crazy James Inman shit, and then I'll block him on Twitter for a day just for fun, just to watch him go fucking ape shit. And I don't know how much he's aware of, like, 
I'm the best guest on your podcast, and everyone wants to be back, and you guys fuck with me. But he's, like, the only person in my adult life at 50-something years old. I, I'm doing the math. Almost 53. Actually, by the time this comes out, maybe 53. But that I actually got you know, a physical altercation with on mushrooms where you're being a fucking dick. I pushed him up against the wall with my fucking hand on his throat. Like, just fucking Inman, have some goddamn respect. Like, I flew you out here on my own dime, and you're walking up and down my street at four in the morning in a quiet neighborhood screaming, Where's Doug Stanhope's other house, you fucking... All the cool people. And I... I and I, I try to talk to him rationally on mushrooms when you're you're most rational. And he's just such a fucking cock. So, yo, when I fuck with him, I do fuck with him because it's funny, but I don't know how savvy he is to, all right, I'll just be a dick. I think he is. I, it has to be. He's good at it. He's funny. He's a funny comedian. I, I'm going to go uh, in uh, March to the comedy store. They're doing an Unbookables reunion. The, 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 yeah, this, gonna, this might go out after that. I'm going to go, uh, <laughs> or, or most likely never is what I'm thinking. I was just trying to talk. Oh, no, this will go out, but this is going to be when Chaley's doing his fucking... Do you well, think... Chaley can't really be mad. He, did, he, he really was, did walk out. He, well, he really did bust that door down. Yeah, but he's, he can't he's be. Just, he's just drunk. I don't think he's mad. We yeah. just got drunk really fast. I'm fucking hammered. Like we, we, this was a marathon. For the listener, sometimes when we go, oh, we're not going to see each other for a month, we got to put this fucking <laughs> podcast out every week. So sometimes... I don't even know if there's three or four that we've done in a day. I just know that I am threadbare at the soul. And uh, so now we're doing this without Chaley. So Olivia Grace is going to have to start using words with her mouth. You ready for the next question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, This is from Charlie Monroe. Who designed or made the cartoony parts of your condo? Condo. What? Who designed or made the cartoony parts of your condo? Well, that's been a, a work in progress over almost 15 years. Uh, Bingo and I fight over the colors occasionally, but yeah, we just make it... Oh, th- sorry. I keep bringing up the book, but yeah, we, we, we made this place a fucking perfect mental institution for Bingo. And... uh yeah, that's why there's bingo signs everywhere, and everything's painted weird colors, including the gravel. And uh, yeah, you 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 make something over 15 years. We build a little bit of something, or decorate something. And all these fucking signs, and yeah. Uh, but we always have someone that knows how to do construction to do it for us. It's not like we're Chaley. Chaley! Oh, my God. Tracy's following him. I think he's really angry. I think he's just drunk angry, not real angry. Here's... Oh, God damn it. He's going to have to edit this, so I can't talk about him behind his no, back. No, you'll, he'll hear it. That's I know. why I'm being so nice. No, that's not he true. take he takes it he takes it seriously. We were just talking about the times where we've walked him, but he, yeah, he's out there angry. This was the biggest uh, because he never broke the door on his way out. Well, he has to fix it. <laughs> well, all right. he probably wanted he, a new. Not door. has to fix it. He, he chooses to. He fix probably it. already has a new door on order. <laughs> yeah, this is all scripted. He's all. This is all scripted. It's calculated. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a scripted uh, thing by Shaley. All right, I'm going to read the next question. Go ahead. All right. Mike, why do I Why do I keep getting these fucking... Get Bingo to read Listen, one. Listen, Michael Hunt. Really? Yeah. I, I got Peter Johnson once again. 
<laughs> Michael Hunt. Mike Hunt. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're funny. I just watched Gilbert, the Gilbert Godfrey documentary on Netflix. Would you ever consider slash allow slash invite someone to do a Stanhope and Pals maybe documentary? Uh, we have uh, we've talked about this. Maybe not on the podcast, but we've talked about doing a documentary. But you know, my life is the most fucking boring. I just sit around and I, I either watch TV you're, or I I don't do anything that's you're, interesting. Your documentary would end up being like a Castle Rock Candy documentary. Yeah. Because he just stops by. He at Mostly, least plays video yeah, games. Yeah. I don't even do that. Yeah. I just well, sit there well, in my own head he and played, I don't do anything. He wouldn't play it downtown, the local baseball, the old time baseball. He does a lot of stuff. Yeah, it would end up I don't even a, do that. It would end up being a spin off just because he came by your house. Ask yeah. Olivia Grace what it's like on the road with us. Yeah, it's like, it's just, it, it's a lot of driving, check, seeing what a thrift store might have. Finding sushi and you not wanting to do anything. And occasionally at the Hampton Inn or wherever, we go down and we write silently. Right, yeah. Total, yeah, you and I never talk when we're like, like sitting. It's never like, what do you no. think of this? What do you think of that? It's like, uh-huh. At best, yep. that's mm-hmm. the conversation. Is this a funny punchline? And right, then we go like, back to silently word? writing at the fucking closed yeah. breakfast nook at fucking... Two in the afternoon because we're while, close yeah. to where we can go out and smoke. Yep, and you poke your head up every once in a while and be like, that guy's a fan. Guy in the pool. Yeah. I can I tell got, he's got I, blue hair. Yeah, that guy's fucking, <laughs> he's definitely going to try to talk to us. Yep. And I don't want to talk. He's pretty accurate with those uh, predictions. Oh, yeah. It's so fun, though, being like, especially at like the plaza because every, you know, everyone in the casino is like, kind of trapped there if they're going to be there for the show they're at the casino too you know what i mean and so you can really like run into that's people different. like those big shows that's different but i still have to hide away. right hang on i'm talking to bingo just go can you go fucking chaley's in the backyard over there i can't like he can't really be mad should i go no you're fucking. You're, you two are fucking chaleying this thing. But no, I've been on Chaley's side. Did I? Yeah, it was I, you. I really did make him mad. Yeah, not me. It was you. I'm alright. I know, but but it, but was it warranted that he just smashed this fucking? Probably screen? not. No, probably not. As drunk though <laughs> as we are, yeah, that if you include drunk factor, like a wind chill. Factor. If you include the drunk factor, probably. I, I I want I want to hear feedback from the listener. I don't know what you're doing, listener, right now. I don't know if you're in fucking traffic or you're just sitting at your fucking cubicle listening. But did I really say anything that could make Chaley Chaley the fucking most placid person in the world just ripped off a thing? I thought he was I thought he was being theatrical. But I saw Tracy follow him out into the dog shit yard and trying to talk him down. I hear people on the roof. We're surrounded. Yeah. Oh, oh, remember last night when we kept hearing the fucking... Oh, here, oh, the here they come. I think... I, th- I hear Tracy, so I think Did he's I coming back. Oh, I we have not. to... If, if he's coming back in, we have to... Just read another sad. question. Well, read another I mean, question. I, we sort of double down on the. Uh, if you, you, if you Chaley know. comes in, just make Funny. up a question that's about Chaley. Listen, like Chaley obviously is the only person responsible for this podcast. Why don't you give him more respect? Like, read that fake question right, if right. he comes in. Go ahead. But in the meantime, read a real question. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Myers asks. Do fans come to your shows dressed in bad suits? Do you consider it homage or hacky? I love that question. 
I fucking love when you dress up like me. It feels like Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love when you dress up. Usually you don't really match like I do, but you don't have a lot of time or money. But yes, every time you show up in a fucking weird, stupid fucking 70s leisure suit, I fucking love it. I feel like, yes, I I feel... vindicated is not the right word i i feel yeah i love it yes it absolutely i hug you as much as i do patreon people i hug people who fucking show up in a weird plaid suit and a bad tie that doesn't really match and then i go ah you should have worn something different with that (laughs) tie you do really you have a lot of fashion rules you have like things that you're like really like oh even though it looks good together it's still not right you know i fucking hate comedians that do whatever netflix whatever specials and they're wearing a t-shirt fucking come on glam rocket you motherfucker Mm -hmm. i think it's awesome that you dress up but there are there are the two schools of like thought and comedy where it's like you don't want to dress in a way that's going to distract anyone from your face but then there's you where you're 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 the from what's your rule about dressing up when i started doing that i thought this takes away from my fucking bombast about i hate the fucking world or whatever i'm saying (laughs) but i'm just like a fucking idiot like fucking (laughs) Herb Tarlick from WKRP <laughs> Cincinnati. It takes an edge off of my fucking hate. I'm dressed. It's like Bozo the Clown going, fucking New World Order. I'm against it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> honk, honk on my fucking clown nose. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah it, and it gives me perspective that, yes, I'm a comedian. So you I never feel like I you're taking that. yourself too seriously, right? That's what I use. Or yeah, they're not. Okay. That's <laughs> or they're great. not. And that they're, yeah, right, right, right. I love it. I think it's great. Because there is, I think, I can't remember who said it. It might have been Ralphie May who said, always dress better than your audience, right? Is that sort of what you're, is that? I don't know. Where, like, How did is that Ralphie where you, May say that? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was, God I remember knows it what was he like dressed a video. Like. Um, I don't remember who said it, honestly. But yeah, it was some kind of thing. Then there's like other comics who are like, oh, dress down and look normal so that, you know. Yeah. I just, I already no, said I that. fucking, people just, they, people will do a fucking Netflix special dressed like you. Just a fucking whatever, Gas Monkey Garage t shirts and. Well, do you ever think that sometimes, like, uh, you know, if they've already established themselves as that character, like, that's the... No, every comic just dresses in a fucking t-shirt. Because I would feel weird trying to dress like you do. You know, I have a jacket and different stuff that I've worn, but I always feel fucking weird dressing this, you know. Well, you don't do stand-up comedy. Well, I, I understand that, but I'm also still in your fucking world, so it's weird... Is it? But is it like a thing of like just sort like a respect thing? Like you should. Like I, I just I, I I try to be showy. Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, on some level, not to the level of I'm fucking Eddie Murphy wearing fucking Michael Jackson outfits and tight leather jeans. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's a fucking I, I, it's a goof thing, and I, think, I, and I enjoy it. I think yeah. the way that you I think the way that you dress complements. Bingo, Bingo's chiming in and doesn't realize that oh, Chaley's yeah. mic is open. Go ahead. A complete, I, I definitely think that the way that you dress complements your fucking comedy, just like you said, to where you're... It offsets you're, you're the biting, bombast. You're biting, Bingo, but stay you also the, look ridiculous. Bingo, you don't have to talk. Just stay right at the mic. Yeah. Right where Chaley should be. Yeah. <laughs> you're God, I really, I really feel bad that I pissed Chaley off because... Uh, he, he's done so much <laughs> over this entire weekend. He's basically he's drunk. That is oh, I know. what's going well, on. Yeah, it's okay. He's a he, he, he's he's a sensitive person. <laughs> <laughs> After he's put in so much goddamn work for this entire fucking weekend, well, or not this entire weekend. Is Chaley really mad here? Tracy's back. He said he's not mad. 
I know. <laughs> I I thought it I thought it was all for show. We're, we're at an hour. Should I just hit stop on this? Yeah, why not? No, we got a, we got more questions. One more I question. We're out. I think we're out. Are we out of questions? I think so. Bingo, do you have any questions? Get over on the microphone. No, How that. about Tracy? Do you have any questions? Get over there. We want to. We need closure on the Chaley thing because he did walk out and cause a, a ruckus, and we've talked about it. I'm not answering for him. But answer for us. He says he's not mad. <laughs> he is pretty fucking drunk. <laughs> I told you it's just drunk, not mad. I know, but, but Key West drunk Chaley is happy. Well, and I just is... had to walk home, and I didn't know where I was, and he was happy. Now he's just smashing doors and stuff, and throwing his headphones. <laughs> the, the, I always hate this when he fucking walks This is incredible Hulk out. happy Chaley. You don't know. <laughs> it's different. You don't want to see me angry. <laughs> Olivia Grace, uh, do you want to promote anything? Oh, wait, Alaska. Alaska You're going to Alaska. Before you die. Yeah, passes are oh, available now. What a fun, fun trip. Were you there last year, Chad? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, bingo's and throwing very, chairs now, too. <laughs> and I'm very, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm very jealous that I won't be there again this year to see you guys. Oh, man. I, oh it was such a good time. I, I wish I could go. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Thank you, Patreon people. Uh, all right, we'll uh, we'll be back again. Bingo, you want to take us out of this? Uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna throw up. Mm. I'm not really gonna throw up, but my. Eleven, two, four. Okay, bye, bye now. <laughs> oh, do it again. I don't like the numbers. 6, 12, 14, 162. Okay, bye-bye now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like the numbers. Hey, uh, we dedicate this podcast to the memory of Greg Chaley, who's out sitting somewhere in a chair, angry that that was not in the chair that he tipped over on his way up. I love you, Greg Chaley.